Hello, my name is Kwame Dawes. I'm a poet and a writer. I was born in Ghana and grew up in Jamaica. There are two Jamaicas. There's the Jamaica that the tourists know, that many Americans know. That's the Jamaica of the North Coast, of the beaches, the waterfalls, the all-inclusive hotels, the partying. Hello, Jamaica. Hello, Jamaica. But there's a second Jamaica, that is the Jamaica on the South Coast. It's the Jamaica of Kingston. It is the Jamaica in which people live day to day, eking out a living. It's a Jamaica that knows wealth. It also knows poverty. It knows violence. But it also has a brash, smart energy. It is where the music is created in Jamaica. And it is in this Jamaica that I've returned to explore the issue of HIV AIDS. If we look at the adult HIV prevalence, in the population, we estimate 1.5% and it has been steady over the past 8 to 10 years. Let's use the analogy of South Africa, where in the early 90s, their prevalence was 1%, certainly under 2%. And literally, within a few years, it just exploded up to about 20%. So it's very important to recognize that this is a sexually transmitted infection and once it is in your population, it has the potential to spread very rapidly. When you talk to people about HIV and AIDS, they just don't see it as an issue. The belief is that it's something still for them okay, maybe it's not a gay disease anymore. We've kind of gotten over it. Kind of, if you're a man and have it, there still become questions about your sexuality. But many people still have the underlying belief, no matter how much information you give them, that it's certain kinds of people, you know, you have to be wild and crazy in your sexual behaviors or at least have multiple partners. But it's an issue and it's, it's endemic, it's endemic, it's widespread. It's not just one sector of society. It's uptown, downtown, all ages and stages. Everybody is infected or affected. We met with u university students and some graduates, and I asked them questions about HIV AIDS, I asked them questions about what they knew, what their thoughts were. They're lively, they had a lot to say. What, what area do people perceive HIV AIDS to be? As he was saying, the gay community, mm -hmm. you have prostitutes, you know, that's, that's the perception where there's a large amount of sexual intercourse, mm -hmm. the risky, so the risky yeah. lifestyle. That's that. Although we're in the risky lifestyle, we might not want to admit it, but that's what we perceive to be the risky lifestyle. I think that's why the disease is spreading so rapidly. Because I have this stigma against you, I don't think, I think I'm better than you so I can't catch it. I'm educated so I can't get AIDS. I only go and have sex with one partner so I can't get AIDS. I think majority of the population has basic, if it's even basic information, to know how it is contracted and all of that stuff. But what my problem is, is getting the, even the basic information to translate it into changing your behavior. You have some guys in Jamaican society, they're not using a condom. They don't like it, it itch, they're allergic. Um, baby, I just want to feel the real you. I mean, natural. <laughs> you girls will get these lines. And, no, but that's not sex, you know? That's artificial sex. Let's have real sex, skin to skin. And girls will believe this, and they'll have sex with them. And they'll have unprotected sex with them simply because they fear losing them. After a while, I began to wonder, what does it take to change sexual behavior in a highly sexualized country like Jamaica? And I also wondered, who was taking on this mission? I remember when I just found out that I was HIV positive, I remember some doctor came into the office and said, within five years, a person who is HIV positive is going to be fully blown. That means I'll start to get sick, get mugged and all of that. But be HIV positive because I'm with somebody and my girlfriend is HIV positive. And that does not mean that we are going to have unprotected sex. Because guess what? I'm on medication, my girlfriend is not on medication. And so my HIV is more advanced than her own. And so if I have unprotected sex with her, she can surpass me in terms of stages. She can pick up, if I have many viruses in my system, she can pick up my viruses. But you know what? This is my faith, and what I'm going to have to do now is to accept it and move on. 
Not that my dream has been shattered because we are now working on our house and we are planning to get, to get married next year. The greatest challenge I have is the individual persons acknowledging their risk. It's not just for HIV, for any STI, to get them to acknowledge the risk, take responsibility. Because it must be human nature that we keep blaming other people for our problems. So do you have any idea how you contracted the disease? No, really. But I know, uh, I'm not saying it's not my is my fault and I'm not saying it's the other person's fault because I'm supposed to take responsibility for myself so it's both of us because if I was protecting myself I wouldn't end up with it so I can't put all the blame on him. We started with about two persons then three and we gradually build on that and just by having them being in a room where they can exhale and be themselves they have to hide and be fearful and just by having them coming twice a month and meeting, sharing their experiences, and realize that, hey, I'm not alone in this thing. There's so many of us. What I, can I just add? I find that persons who have family support do much, much, much better. And sometimes the HIV positive person tend to underestimate their relatives. Yeah. We've had people who feel that like they can't tell their relatives. Yeah. And we need to build up the courage to tell them, like we have them to, you know, build the courage to tell them. When we first found out that strokes from my from my right side, you know one time the men are walk, not talk, I also come up here and start walking and talk. Really? When your mams and dad forsake you, yes I know the law will take you, take you home and set you free. I've been coming to Jamaica very regularly ever since I left and um, you, you, you engage the country, you engage people. I've met many people who I remain convinced are courageous. I've also met people who have reminded me about the resilience of Jamaicans to survive and to struggle to survive um, in difficult times. I've met people who have used what is their sickness to create something useful for themselves. So I'm left with a sense of hope and possibility. Oh, my, 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 my.